It's Skeletor's Swiss Army Knife. Here's your look at the Mattel Master Universe Origins Trap Jaw Evil and Armed for Combat. Modernizing and celebrating the original 80s Master Universe action figures, Master Universe Origins gives you the power to pose Eternia's greatest warriors as retro-style figures or in new action-packed battle positions. Taking a slight detour from the first wave of Master Universe Origins figures just because I wanted to have a look at Trap Draw and I couldn't wait. We're going to take the tape measure right to the very top of his head and first figure out how tall Trap Jaw stands. Now, currently, I've got him in the squat, more retro pose. It's funny enough that actually on the back of the packaging, they say new action-packed battle positions. Why wouldn't they call it battle poses? Anyways, we're going to take it right to the very top of his head, stopping it right there. Corner of the readout, Trap Jaw stands 5.649. Let's just call it 5.6 inches in height. Switching that to centimeters, revealing that the figure is 14.3, almost 14 and a half centimeters tall. Sticking with samesies, of course, for the way that I've got them currently posed, we can bring in the last character we had a look at was Man at Arms. Still got them in that bent pose. So clever on Mattel's part. Here's He-Man. And here is Skeletor. Just going to give you guys an idea. Put Skeletor in the front because he, he's evil. Just because he's evil. Uh, again, like you can put these figures in the bent squat pose based really more so on the way that their retro line looked. Or again, you can straighten out their legs for, quote, bunny ears, action-packed battle positions. But here's what the figures we've looked at so far. Yes, I know, admittingly, the trap jaw really isn't part of this first wave. But again, I couldn't resist. I couldn't wait. Sorry. I suppose at least one good thing about having a look at Trap Draw from Wave 2 is it gives us a bit of a break from having a look at the same Beast Barrage comic every single time. Because Wave 2, let's go ahead and pick this one up, comes with Double Trouble. Double Trouble, which apparently has an evil Orko. He-Man doesn't know what to do. Babysitting these guys. We're going to go ahead and open this up, just kind of give you guys an idea inside. And again, the whole idea with these individual comics per wave is the fact that the comics are centric around the characters that make up this particular wave, like Scarecrow, the Scare Glow, I should say, is part of this wave, for example. Uh, Orko is part of this wave. Uh, Man Manny Faces is also part of this wave, even though he's not technically, well, there he is right there. It's just, he's walking to Castle Grayskull. So as you can see, like, the comics literally are based on the characters from that particular wave. We compare it to, say, for example, the first wave comic, which was Beast Barrage. Yeah, again, we had to get a little bit of a break away from this. You're literally going to be seeing this comic every single time we have a look at a Wave 2 figure. And every single time we finish up at least the first wave of figures, you're going to be looking at Beast Barrage. A whole lot of comics to be handed around the kids in the neighborhood. Trapjaw also comes with, of course, some included weapons, all which swap onto his arm. Similar, of course, to the original Trapjaw figure. Now, the accessories included with Trapjaw, we're going to go ahead and pick these up right now. It comes with like a laser rifle little laser blaster. And literally, again, all of these are just molded in the black plastic. So they've saved a lot when it comes to having to actually go and paint these. There's very little paint on any of these figures. So it comes with that. Uh, he comes with a little claw weapon. And he comes with a hook. He's the original Captain Hook. Uh, all of these, we'll go ahead and pick the figure up. There's a little hole, obviously, on the end of his, what would have been his forearm, and you're literally just taking the plug, the peg on the end of it, and you're sliding it into the hole, just like that. And then, of course, if you want to swap this out, just go ahead and pull this off and swap it out for the laser blaster. I kind of actually think the laser blaster is my favorite of the three. I'm not really sure. It's either between that and the claw. Not so big on the hook myself. Technically, there is some a little bit of possibility, I suppose, being the fact that it just simply plugs into place. Now, you're probably asking yourself, well, what am I supposed to do with all the extras? Just keep them in my pocket all the time? Well, that's not really going to work if you're going to be washing your clothes. Throwing them in the washing machine, those little accessories are going to get damaged. But what you can do, spin the figure around to the back, and he has these little loops on the back. The loops work with these hooks that are located on the side of the tools. So you just literally take these and you slide them down. Be careful, though. I have not yet seen any stress marks on the tops of these, but i got to imagine if you're putting them down and bending them too quickly, you may end up warping these. 
because again, there's a very little slot available, very little mileage to work with. Again, you just slide that into place. This one's a little harder because of course you have to get it around his armor, but you can keep those conveniently at bay, of course, when he actually needs them. I'm not really sure how he's supposed to really grab them though. Does he ask one of other Skeletor's minions, hey, Beastman, can you come over here and just pull off my hook? You're what? You just pull off my hook. I can't reach it. I, I, I literally can't reach the hook on my back. I guess he could reach on that one side. This other side is going to be just problematic. So at least he does have storage capabilities. We'll go ahead and take those off right now. I think maybe for the rest of this review, I might actually just keep the blaster in its place. And getting a closer look at Trapjaw, a decent looking figure. He has some issues with his paint, unfortunately. I know I just finished talking about how these figures have literally no paint going for them. But unfortunately, I've got like one little dot right at the top, right above his eye. I tried my best to actually go in there and scrape it off, but I think it's actually just a little bit of paint probably left from his eyeball. That's a bit of a shame. The one thing that's neat about Trapjaw is that you can actually open up his mouth. I would have liked maybe if the mouth would have been sunken a little more further in because it seems so flat. I would have liked if I think the jaw was just a little bit more sticking out a little bit, not that much obviously, but maybe have the mouth area just a little more curved inward. I do at least like the fact that he does have the open and closed mouth. That's very cool. Because I mean, ultimately they could have just left that as just one molded piece or they could have just molded it like that, called it a day, but they didn't do that. They actually have a little hinge on his jaw. That's super cool. The other problem, unfortunately with this figure when it comes to at least QC issues is right here. And I'm guessing this part was painted on, painted on in the same similar green as the pirate belt that he's also sporting as well. Unfortunately though, by painting this in place, it looks like a little bit of that green paint has scraped off and it couldn't be any bit more visible. I'm literally, it's like, it stands out like a sore thumb or a sore hook, I suppose. That's a bit disappointing. I'm gonna see if I, maybe I can find a little bit of green paint. I've got a little bit on this side as well that's been removed off as well. I literally just took this out of the packaging, so I'm not really sure what could have happened at the factory to result in having all this paint uh, just chipped and scraped right off. I probably could find myself some neon green paint, see if I can actually touch up those places. It looks like he's got a little bit of green paint here on the side as well. Now, I had mentioned already when we were looking at these Master Universe Origins figures so far, thus far, that really they've saved a lot having to not having to paint these because most of the pieces are all put to place. Like, you know, you're literally just molding this part of the plastic and they probably have attached this. Actually, you know what? That looks like that's been painted. That's been painted onto the plastic right here. But most of the pieces are actually separate standalone pieces. Like his furry underoos, for example, are separate molded plastic than the rest of, of course, his body. But then, of course, we start talking about trap jaw. And the thing I talked about the most about the fact that these figures are so cleanly painted, and unfortunately there's a lot of issues really when it comes to the paintwork done on Trapjaw. You can see a little bit of that black paint has just bled its way onto the blue. We've already discussed, of course, the fact that these little areas right here, man, I don't know what's, again, what's happened here, why that's chipped off and flaked off so quickly into this. And then of course he also has the little areas in his arms, which you can see isn't the cleanest a little bit of that green has carried off onto the blue. The rest of the figure looks good. It's nice, vibrant, and bright. It's just a shame that really the paint problems plaguing Trapjaw and all the places I just mentioned, the rest of the figure looks actually pretty good. Looking at the figure's articulation, bring his arm down for that. His head rotates all the way around. Also does open and close his mouth, as we've already discussed together. His arm the robotic arm rotates all the way around. It doesn't seem like it has a hinge joint like this arm does here. This arm, you can actually bend it right out, giving you a full 90 degree angle bend. Hold on, hold on. There you go. Full 90 degree angle bend. You can rotate this arm all the way around. He has a bend at the elbow. A little loose actually on trap jaw here as well. And his hand rotates all the way around as well. This arm does have the swivel joint here and you can also bend this as well like that. I was a little worried actually that that joint would break on me. I don't know why I was thinking that. It seemed really tight. Maybe that was one of the issues why I was thinking it was going to break on me. I really got to stop saying break. Really got to stop saying break. But this rotates back and forth and then technically based on this just being something that plugs into place, it could actually rotate as well. As for his waist, his waist swivels back and forth. That's all you're going to get for that. Legs split out and you can of course either bend the knee like this 
and have it in its more retro pose, or you can straighten out the legs and give them a more modernized stance. Of course, it kind of increases the proportions, I think, a little bit better. The one issue I also have with Trap Jaw is when it comes to his feet. Now, you'll see at the bottoms of his legs, he's got these basic like shin guards, but I guess it's not really shin guards because I think all of this is robotic anyways. But like basically this little cup of plastic, see it right there? It does limit what you can actually do with the, with the feet. You can't move the feet, I feel, as well back and forth this way. So while he does have no difficulty standing when you have the legs straight like this, I feel like when you are bending the knee like this, I can't quite get the feet to be completely leveled flat, even though I feel like I can hinge them back fine. Maybe it's just the fact it's throwing off. Like it, maybe it's bending. It's the knee, I think. Maybe that's the issue. I feel like he just doesn't, just doesn't stand very well at all. So I think in a case like this, even though considering I'm doing this anyways with all these Masters figures, I think I'd rather keep Trap Jaw with the legs straight. Not only does it from aesthetically, does it make the figure look a little bit better in my own personal opinion, but it also guarantees the figure isn't going to fall over because he does have, like I said, some issues with either his knees, his ankles, possibly even both. But it's definitely some problems when it comes to him standing in that retro pose. Here for final looks of Trap Jaw, I'm showing you guys the back of the packaging as a change of pace to show you guys the other characters that make up this wave, which I believe is wave two. Many faces, Orko, Scare Glow, and of course the figure that we had a look at in this review, Trap Jaw, to be also included by He-Man and Skeletor. Smart on Mattel's part to give us He-Man and Skeletor with each wave, as opposed to only making them the first wave releases. And then, therefore, people who are still never got the chance to get He-Man and Skeletor have to start going online and paying those scalpers prices. You're not going to do it this time because you can actually get He-Man and Skeletor with every single wave. It may result in also having He-Man and Skeletor just, just riddling the pegs. You'll find He-Mans and Skeletors as far as the eye can see, but at least the people that missed their chance on the first wave can still get the opportunity to get this guy or those two guys in the next subsequent waves. Now, where I've pointed out all the things I liked about the previous figures that we've looked at so far, the other three figures, Trapjaw now brings us an example of what figures could look like with additional paint. Something that we didn't really see a whole lot of with He-Man, Skeletor, and Man-at-Arms. Trapjaw has some additional paint applications. And I really hope this isn't a telltale sign of what we should expect with future figures from the Man Master of the Universe Origins line, because Trapjaw does have some pretty messy looking paint. The part that's molded plastic is fine and good, but the areas that are painted are really problematic, especially like the areas of the thighs where you can just see, I don't know what's happened with those thighs. I mean, that, that black is just peeking its way through. It either is black paint on top of the green. I think it's actually the opposite. I think it's the green that's just been chipped off and you see the black underneath. The arms are a bit on the messy side as well. Trap jaw could have seen better days. And unfortunately, that's certainly one of the things that go along with the idea now, now that Trapjaw is a painted figure, whereas the other figures, we really didn't have as much that issue. Again, I really hope that this isn't going to be a case with every single figure that's going to be painted. There's going to be some QC issues. Maybe it's only self-contained with Trapjaw. Let's hope that be the case. I do like the fact that he does come with the swappable hands. And at least if you don't have those tools all in his arm, because obviously he can only hold one at a time, at least he has a place on the back of the belt where he can store the remaining of those. Very nicely done. He does have posability where it counts. Of course, the same posability as the, all the other figures. Still some difficulty, though, getting him in that crouched retro pose. I'm not really sure why it affects Trap Jaw, and it never really affected the other figures. But I do have some more difficulty getting him to stand. Maybe it could just result in the fact he's a little bit more top-heavy because he has so much more stuff going on for his body. Either way, though, I'm really happy now it's still to be continuing to collect the Masters of the Universe Origins figures. And again, so far, a big, big thank you to Sherwin, viewer Sherwin, who had picked these ones up and sent these my way. If you want to check out Sherwin's work, work head on over to Instagram and look up Shell Pose. You'll be happy that you did. If you are new to this channel and you're liking all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and if you're a big fan of, Mastery of U uh, Masters of the Universe, that's big of a mouthful, stay tuned to this channel because we're going to be looking at the rest of Wave 1, and we're going to be continuing our journey to Eternia as we have a look at Wave 2, Wave 3, and so on and so forth. A little behind on scheduling, unfortunately, when it came to getting the reviews done of these, but we're hoping to pick up shop and catch up. We're going to have a look at the rest of these. So keep your peepers peeled to this channel. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.